you know, Miami, <laughs> like nothing's closed. But then, oh they, no, they Miami's never, ridiculous. They never closed anything in Florida. People come up to you, like lick you on the arm, like thank you, but no, I don't thank you. I mean, DeSantis, and we're going to tell this story, Eddie. But DeSantis, like. Florida like fired some guy for asking people to get vaccines. Right, right. It's he's really like his pitch. Here's his pitch. DeSantis's pitch to the Republican Party is Donald Trump is too responsible on COVID, and he's running with that. Right. Yeah, I was I was just recently down at Florida International University giving a talk, mm -hmm. and what was funny is how awkward people were trying to be safe. Yeah, you know because not used to it. Yeah, just. Uh, trying to figure out how I remember happens. being in Florida last last January the peak of it it was like it didn't exist it, it, it was insanity when you come from New York where it, at that point we were bubble wrapped yeah uh, I don't know here's the and story Joe was talking about top public health official in Orlando has been placed on administrative leave after he sent an email to employees encouraging everyone to get vaccinated against coronavirus. Dr. Raul Pino, who serves as director of the Florida Department of Health in Orange County, sent the email earlier this month. In it, he noted among the office's 568 employees, only 219 had completed a full vaccination series and just 77 of them had the booster, a number he called super low. The doctor wrote this, I have a hard time understanding how we can be in public health and not practice it. He wanted to say, I'm sorry, but in the absence of reasonable and real reasons, it is irresponsible not to be vaccinated. Times notes it's unclear whether Dr. Pino was placed on leave for urging employees to get vaccinated for compiling their vaccination status or perhaps both. The Florida Department of Health since has released a statement calling the decision to get vaccinated a, quote, personal medical choice that should be made free from coercion and mandates from employers. It's Eddie, come on. It's just, this is just ridiculous. A guy gets fired for saying don't smoke. I mean, hey, you, you, you all are administrative leave. Hey, you, you know what? You really shouldn't smoke. It's bad for you. And that, that's where I am with this. You don't want to get vaccinated. You want to put your family at risk. You want to put yourself at risk. You want to put your life at risk. Your call, it's America. You know, but a guy that's in a public health uh, 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 department can't encourage other people to get the vaccination? I mean, it makes no sense to me. And it, it is it's the height of irresponsibility for no. public officials to be held accountable in this way for, for doing something that is just simply commonsensical, that yeah. is responsible in some ways. Yeah. But it also gives me uh, an indicate, or it indicates to me, Joe, that uh, this is why it's taking us so long to get out of this. Yeah. Because people are just... Had, they have a caricatured sense of what freedom is. Yeah, yeah well, it, 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 it's sort of this hyper, uh, this frenzied uh, definition of freedom. Mm -hmm. Hyper individualism that's been, that, that has been in vogue for the past 20 years or so, and, and it gets crazier and crazier every single year to the point now that, that Donnie, people who got five vaccinations to go to school had five vaccinations given to all their kids to go to school, and that's how they've lived. Suddenly, man, Jake, uh, you don't tread on me. Don't don't make me do what I had my children do three years ago. And you look at states like Mississippi, who hated the libs uh, out in in California, who were the progressives who so granola. They didn't. They were the original anti vaxxers Well, Mississippi has some of the toughest vaccine requirements. Where, where before COVID, they said, no, 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 no religious exceptions. You're getting the vaccine. And they would brag about having the highest vaccine rates. It got politicized. Now, suddenly, vaccines are bad. It defies, any, as Eddie said, any common sense. And it's just, I, I, I love that there's the freedom there, but then we don't want the Voting Rights Act. I, I mean, there's certain, their definition of freedom has a very, very, very narrow take on it. But you just, you, there's, at this point, there is no logical discussion you can have with somebody on that side of the equation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you've asked on the show, and I get asked all the time, well, what messaging would you put out there? To put? None. There's, there, there's nothing. There's, there's no left brain. There's no right brain. There's no, like, save the kids. There's no you're going to die. Like, and I, I just the, there's just nothing. There's nothing. It is, it's just a wall, and um, it's... Uh, there's no words for it. You're mandated or you don't mandate yeah. it. I, you know, I, I've got, again, I've got a lot of friends, got a lot of relatives who would much rather take ivermectin and every, every crazy and what's their argument? What, what, when you, what's, when you debate, you say to them in the most loving way, in the most, what's the answer that comes there, back? There, there's a, everybody, it's just like voting for Trump. Yeah. Everybody has, everybody has an excuse. Everybody has a different reason. 
Everybody has something they saw on the Internet. Everybody has something that somebody sent them on Facebook. Everybody's got their own story. And it, it's, it's not consistent. They're never consistent with each other because it used to be, oh, it's not FDA approved. But give me the ivermectin. Well, what are some of the, give me three stories, three, three responses. Uh, well, it used to be, um, it's not FDA That's approved. Tested, right. Then it got FDA approved and said, oh, there are aborted fetuses in there. And you explain, well, no, actually, it's a line that goes back to like the 1960s. And if you're taking Advil or any, any medicine, chances are good, you know, that, that you could make the same argument for that. And then they just go, it's dangerous. So, you, you know, they all have, again, they all have a story. You can't, it's just like the election uh, being stolen. I, I've tried to go through it logically with dear friends and loved ones. And, you know, they, they bring you theory. You know, no, that's not right. Here's why. Here's the link from Fox News. Here's a link from the Wall Street Journal. Here's a link from the Daily Caller. Here's a link from, you know, get, get conservative websites. Send it back to them. But they're looking at websites that are run by Chinese cults. Yep. And they go, yeah, but this says such and such. No. And so you get you get one of them, then they'll send you another. It doesn't matter. It, it is it is a constant whack-a-mole game. Their arguments are inconsistent. You take it down. And then I had one friend. I sent him all this and, and cornered him on every single thing. And he goes, what about the Russia hoax? <laughs> I sent him a link to the, the Mueller report. Right. <laughs> because that's what they do. It's just a whack of a Because you're on thing. a team. It's like you're on a team. You know what I do? Part of you know what I actually do? You know what I do? And you know what my, my, my family does? You know what my kids do? And, and I, this, this sounds hokey to a lot of people. We just pray for them now. We just pray for them. Pray for our family. Right. We pray for our friends. We pray for our loved ones. We pray for everybody out there. Because, my God, the stories I've heard about people and some friends who have called me up thinking that they were about to die, crying they didn't have the the uh the vaccine and it's heartbreaking like these jerks these total jerks who get on twitter uh, and celebrate human beings uh, suffering because they weren't vaccinated i mean do they dance on the graves of people who smoke i mean people do what people do and sometimes you know they're misguided sometimes they're taken down the wrong path it's just you know I don't understand addiction. I don't understand drug addiction, but I've had a lot of friends that have been addicted and it is sad and it is painful and it is a disease. And and you, you weep for them when they die and, and, and you pray for them while they're uh, going through rehab. Um, but that's where we are at this point. All I for, and all the, you can do is pray for them. And, I mean, because at this point, there's no educational campaign that's yeah. going to reach people with no, a master's no. degree or attorneys that graduated from really good law schools that are <laughs> that are quoting quoting Chinese religious cult websites and risking their lives and their spouses lives and their children's life how do you reason with that you don't no. you just got to pray for them I mean with me that's the decision I've made just thinking about one of your states Nick Saban going out publicly for months and months now and saying go get the vaccine hasn't worked now if Nick Saban in the state of Alabama telling people and Tommy Tuberville by the way to his credit right. Senator Tuberville the former Auburn coach saying that those are as close to Gosh, religious yes. leaders and oh, yeah. gods yeah. as you can get in the state of Alabama nobody's listening to them either but the people you're talking about are the victims of a hustle we've been talking about a lot lately which is people who know better people in the media politicians saying yes there is something nefarious about this vaccine yes there are side effects click here so we can fight the libs who are imposing this on you click here so we can fire fauci they're just taking their money what about the doctors they're taking Say, their money click here and i have something that will right. save you right snake oil sells me. and how about there was a fascinating moment last week with former president trump eddie he was in an interview with newsmax the newsmax host clearly thought the president was on his side, Throw, throws up the softball about all the side effects of the booster, and Trump just cut him off and said, there are no side effects. I got the vaccine. I got the booster. It was a fascinating moment to have their God, President Trump, punch a hole in that entire argument 
Now, he was probably talking to Ron DeSantis, and that's right. a whole other side of it. Right. But to have Donald Trump be the one to say, I got vaccine, I got the booster. There are no side effects. I'm fine. Everybody get the booster. You know, I've, I've been thinking about this a lot. Right. How do you engage people who hold these sorts of positions? I was actually triggered by Marsha Blackburn on the floor of the Senate and what she was saying. I was like, how do you debate with these people? Mm -hmm. How do you debate with Rick Scott? How do you put forward arguments when they don't? Right. You know, as what did Senator Moynihan said, you can have your own opinion, but you can't have your own facts. Right. And then I was thinking about the intimacy of our hatreds, the fact that you have people that you love, mm -hmm. right, saying these things saying ugly things, saying stupid things, acting on ugly things, acting on stupid things. What do we do with that? Pray for them, yes. Mm -hmm. But what do we do with the fact that hatred festers, fear festers in these intimate spaces with people we love and interact with every day and we can't break through? Well, I, I will tell you that I've seen a couple of people. Uh, Kurt Anderson went to West Virginia. Uh, and uh, wrote about it, had a great piece there. Others uh, have gone out uh, trying to find that civil war in between red state America and blue state America. And they found the opposite. Of course, uh, and, uh, you, you, you have, uh, I, I think so much of this is contained in the media. I think it's spoken through our politicians. I think it's spoken through the media. Uh, wrote about it in the Washington Post. Um, you know, this is for me. I'm, I've seen this before. Mm. This is my grandma who grew up watching the Billy Graham Crusades. Uh, we all would watch the Billy Graham Crusades. Moved by it. Billy Graham was 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 hero of mine growing up. I, I absolutely loved him. But people saw what Billy Graham was doing and said, look at all of those people. And Jim and Tammy Faye Baker were thinking, look at all of that money. So they start the PTL club, and pretty soon my grandmom's sending her Social Security check every week to Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. And it was very obvious to us that it was a scam. It wasn't obvious to my grandmom because my grandmom loved Jesus, and these people, she thought, were, you know, forwarding Jesus' kingdom here on earth. And she had to give them her Social Security check every week. My parents right. talked to her. We talked to her. And Willie just thought, like, you know, you're just talking about before. This is a hustle. Mm. And so people, people have an economic incentive to lie to, to, to Americans and tell them don't get the vaccine or send me $100 and help me fight this election fraud. They have stolen your election from you. Mm. I mean, it's all it is all a scam. Welcome back to Morning Joe. A military veteran from Kansas City was sentenced to 30 days home detention and probation on Wednesday for his role in the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol. Kerry John Walden went to the Capitol that day prepared for violence, the government stated in court documents. He brought a gas mask with him from home and wore it inside the Capitol building, entering through a window that had been smashed. The former Marine told a federal judge he was ashamed he was part of the events that day and would take it all back. If he could join us now, senior reporter at NBC News, Brandy Zadrozny, who spoke extensively with another person who was part of the events on January 6th, stopped short of entering the Capitol. Brandy writes about it in her latest piece titled Escape from QAnon, how January 6th changed one person's path. First of all, Brandy, it's great to see you in person. We've gotten used to you in your apartment. I know all your backdrops. I hear your kids. It's just we They won't them. be waddling in today, so I'm I, sorry or you're welcome. Can I say I kind of miss them? I know, me too, in. actually. Um, so tell us about this guy, a 30-year-old from Brooklyn, because it is so representative of it is your neighbor. It, it could have been anyone. How did he get radicalized? So um, this person, Justin, we're saving his last name so future employers can't look him up and discover this about him right away. But he was a professional, educated, 30 years old, lived a couple blocks away from me in Brooklyn. And he reached out to me after I uh, tweeted something about, I think that QAnon people are going to have a come to Jesus moment, right? And he reached out to me and said, I think maybe that was me. So three years of increasingly uh, problematic 
internet history, getting into Pizzagate, which we've talked mm -hmm. about on the show quite a bit, and then QAnon, just sort of spiraling. He lost family relationships, he lost his job, he lost girlfriends, he lost everyone he knew until that day that he came to the Capitol. He stood on the steps of the Capitol waiting for the storm, this like prophesized day where, you know, all the evildoers would be rounded up. And he had a come to Jesus moment where he was like, I'm seeing people in MAGA hats beat police officers. I'm seeing radicalized people that were just, you know, at the park with me watching Trump speak that seemed like normal my folks. And this is what they're doing now. And he didn't want to be associated with that. And he went home. He had a loving family, which you guys just talked about. How do we talk to our family members who are into this stuff? He had a loving family there waiting to do an intervention. And then for a year, he sort of went to therapy and started de-radicalizing mm. himself, but it took a really long time. And so just to think like, that's the process we're gonna have. You need to have a come to Jesus moment where you realize what these movements are. You need to have a loving support system to come back to, and then you need to do the work. Yeah, well, it got real for him that day. It wasn't an online fantasy like he'd been reading about for, for three years. So what is it about him and, and others who, as you say, had a relatively normal life, a successful career, all those things, why was he so susceptible to this? Why did he lose a girlfriend and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose this over my girlfriend? What was it about him and others that opens them up to this kind of manipulation? So it's different for every person, right? I know a little old lady who owns a mitten store in Michigan. For her, this is a religion, right? This is all about Jesus and good versus evil. Mm. For Justin, this was about an online game almost. He did the puzzles. This, there were a lot. There's, it, there's a very gamey aspect to this where this purported Q person behind QAnon released these sort of puzzles. You guessed the clues and you could see how the conspiracy theory was going to play out in real life. So this is what drew him to it. It really does change for each people, for each person. Yoga moms in New Mexico are latching on to QAnon because they think they're saving the children, something we talked about. So it really has something for everyone. It's an umbrella conspiracy theory movement. And even though Q hasn't posted in a year, even though Trump is no longer president, the conspiracy theory is very much alive. So how does he grapple with the consequences of this journey? So it's a moment to have a moment of revelation. You have the, the, the psychology of the mob. You can get caught up into it, in it and the like. And you can go home and you can have your, your revelatory moment and people love you. But there are consequences that follow from all of the things you've been doing over the course of that journey. How is he grappling with the consequences of what he's doing? Well, he's in therapy. I can say that. And I think that he's sort of doing the work in that way. But, you know, I was supposed to report this story months and months ago. And I don't think he was ready to sort of come out as he has with it because he knew that he had contributed to a thing that was negative, that was not a positive thing in this world. And he feels truly, truly bad about that. And you can see someone who feels bad about what they've contributed to. And so six months later, after he, you know, we had written the article and he's like, oh, I'm not, I just, I'm not ready to really, really see what in the public, what I've done. And then six months later, still doing the work, still talking to him briefly because he's my neighbor and we keep in touch and I am an invested reporter. <laughs> um, so six months later, he's sort of ready. And I think that that is instructive when you're willing to say not only I've made a mistake, but I've made a mistake, and how can I rectify it? Mm -hmm. And I think I've been getting hundreds of emails from people saying, my sister, this reminds me of my sister, this reminds me of my son. And I think that mm -hmm. is how you grapple with the mistakes that you've made. And you say you can see it in the video where he, he, he uh, capital steps, it hits him. Yeah, he videoed the whole thing, and he was very open with me. He shared all of his videos, all of his texts with family and friends as he, you know, devolved the last yeah. year. We see that, and as I was watching his video footage of the Capitol, you know, he did go over the first barricade. He was at the steps of the Capitol. But as the violence started, and as, you know, violent mobsters sort of started attacking the police line, you can literally see in his footage him sort of inch away. And so that, for me, was another symbol of you could, yeah. you could see it happen in real time. Justin said to Brandy, I felt like I'd been kidnapped, taken for a wild ride that was a lot of fun, and then dumped back on the street trying to figure out where did I go, what just happened. Such a fascinating story. Senior reporter at NBC News, Brandy Zadrowski. Great to see you, Brandy. Thank you.
The uh, <laughs> district attorney is turning to real news, and Georgia's largest county is requesting a special grand jury to aid her investigation into 2020 election interference by former President Donald Trump and others. In a letter sent to the chief judge of Fulton County Superior Court yesterday, DA Fannie Willis asked for assistance in finding, quote, any coordinated attempts to unlawfully alter the outcome of the 2020 election in the state. She wrote that a large number of witnesses have refused to cooperate with the probe and that a grand jury would have the power to issue subpoenas. In a recent interview with the Associated Press, Willis said the scope of the investigation includes, but is not limited to, the phone call, the infamous phone call on January 2nd, 2021, where Trump asked Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger to, quote, find the votes needed to overturn his election loss in the state. I only need 11,000 votes. Fellas, I need 11,000 votes. Give me a break. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more that we have. There's nothing wrong with saying that you know, uh, that you've recalculated. That, you that is on that tape. Is what so else do you need? Bad. If that's what else do you need? That's a full scale banana republic. Oh my God. What is? Well, I also, mean, what is? Also, I mean, the question continues to be raised about this, and I think you've talked about it on the show. Yeah. If that's not illegal, <laughs> yeah. if that's like, not, like we need a law. Yes. 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 If that's not illegal, there's, somebody should write a law. Find me right one on. more vote. Come on, you can just go on and tell people you found me one more vote that I needed to win. Uh, you know, that um, that would be um, uh, smoking gun there. That's it. Right? Yeah. Is it not? Michael Steele, uh, that's a, it, this is one of those things that, unlike fine wine, I don't drink wine, but I hear it gets better with time. This actually gets worse with time. As we get away from the madness, the crani craziness, the lunacy. And we're just sitting around the table talking about meatloaf and Fight Club right. and Will Ferrell. You play this, it's really jarring. It is jarring. Just just as my little homage to, to meatloaf, uh, growing up in my neighborhood, it was, it was not something that was a mainstay except for what mama put on the table every Wednesday. Yeah. But I got to, I got to watch him and, and enjoy him in Rocky Horror. And from there, uh, really, really uh, a transformative, uh, gifted artist. So, uh, really appreciate the legacy that he's left all of us. Uh, to your to your point, Joe, I think the reality um, is very much that when you hear the president saying, "Just get me one more vote than we already have," that we already have, just just one more, just eleven thousand votes. Just tell people you 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 found that for me. You did that for me. Um, you hope that that rankles the, you know, rankles the, the sensibilities of the American people and certainly makes them aware of just how <laughs> perverse, um, uh, and, and, and to Elise's point, how banana republic uh, this administration was, desperate even, uh, to, to get this election turned around in their favor. Um, all of this is fodder, not just for the January 6th commission, but as we know, for, for the New York prosecutors as well. And, and it'll be interesting to see, from my perspective, how the American people react and respond to this when they see the whole thing laid out, contextualized, put yeah. into uh, a, a full view frame for them to understand exactly how corrupt this administration was uh, in, the, in the last year of this term. Now, Elise. I mean, I'm sure somebody out there has had a worse week than Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. But when you look back over this week and you see uh, the New York Attorney General, uh, Ron DeSantis insulting him, Supreme Court of the United uh, States, the Supreme Court of the United States, uh, just slapping him down eight one in, in a, a very, he would say his Supreme Court completely just rejecting his claim. And all of this information, which is, as John said yesterday, as bad as it gets. I mean, you know, all of his henchmen are going to lie. So, but the documents don't lie. And now Georgia. I mean, this is, this is a really, really bad week. His kids are under pressure. Does he even care about that? But... His kids are under pressure. A, a, normal, a normal person would. I have all of those things. I wonder what bothers him the most. And I kind of think maybe Ron DeSantis. And yeah. that's, well, really, yeah. that's really personal because no. he felt like he really made him on the pedestal to be governor of Florida. And then now 
this Ivy League guy might be coming out to get him. Yeah. Ivy League. I, I, I hate. Love I love that. I, I, I like, yeah. At least it's going for the jugular there on DeSantis. <laughs> oh, by the way, Ivy League guy, Ron DeSantis, <laughs> just trying to muddy him up there a little bit. So, so let's get this straight. So Ivy League guy, mm. Ron DeSantis Ivy attacks no, no. Ivy League guy. Donald Trump. Well, he transferred in, but yeah. Well, yeah. Ivy League guy, uh, <laughs> the guy with the little hand, this, uh, the little bone oh, the structure. Bones. Like yes. mm -hmm. Hawley, Senator Hawley. Uh, him, yeah. yeah. Oh, what about the guy, what about the guy from yeah. Texas? Um, but they're just, they're all mm. Ivy Leaguers. And then you got, you know, the guy from Arkansas. Yeah. You know, they all went to really good schools. And yeah. I just, I thank God that every Ivy League school reject me. And then we got the.